Let's get more now on that Supreme Court ruling. Uh, judges in London deciding to reject the Scottish government's argument that it can hold a second independence referendum without consent from the Westminster government. Lord Reid uh, said he and his fellow judges unanimously agree that power on this issue lies with the UK government. Joining me now is Akash Pown. He leads the devolution programme for the Institute for Government, which is a non-partisan think tank. Akash, thank you very much for your time today. And, and what's your reaction to that judgment and what uh, the Chief Justice, the President of the Supreme Court, Lord Reid, had to say? Well, it was very clear cut. It was, uh, as you've just noted, um, a unanimous decision of the, of the justices. Um, and there was some speculation beforehand that the, the court might actually avoid answering the, the core substantive question about whether a referendum could go ahead. There was a procedural question about whether this whole case was being brought prematurely. So some people thought might, the issue might sort of rumble on um, if the court had kicked it back to the Scottish Parliament. But actually the court grabbed the, the central issue and uh, made it absolutely crystal clear that under current law, the Scottish Parliament cannot proceed with um, Nicola Sturgeon's planned referendum unless and until she were to secure the backing of, of the UK government and Parliament for that plan. So she has said, Nicola Sturgeon, that she will respect this judgment. So there is no way, is there, that the Scottish government is going to try to uh, go ahead and, and, and pass legislation anyway, is there? No, I don't believe so. Nicola Sturgeon, the, the, the Scottish government as a whole, has, has for very many years made it clear that it wants to proceed in a, in a lawful way. Um, it's never talked about going down a Catalan-style, um, unauthorised referendum kind of route. It's very important, I think, to the Scottish government that it is and it is seen to be a a government and an institution that that respects the rule of law so yes I fully expect um, Nicola Sturgeon to, to to respect the judgment. So, so the only route is political now isn't it and do you think um, realistically there is anything that the SNP and the Greens who also support the idea of a second uh, referendum is there anything they can do before the next general election because Nicola Sturgeon has talked about making that a de, fa de facto independence referendum hasn't she is there anything they can do realistically between now and then well as you say I mean it, it's back into the political arena now we're, we're, we're waiting to hear Nicola Sturgeon's fuller response to statements expected in the next hour or so from her and, and, and she may well set out um, some specific steps that her government intends to take. Um, but yeah, as we've said, the legal, the legal route is closed for now. The next general election is perhaps 18 months or two years away um, and one would expect the SNP to, to put independence front and centre of um, its campaign and its manifesto and then based on previous statements of the First Minister the, 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 the Nationalist Party and, and its Green Allies as you say will seek to secure over 50% of, of the popular vote in that election which it will then claim is a mandate for independence but I think constitutionally that's a bit questionable because a general election is a general election it's an election to to determine the membership of the House of Commons, to determine the composition of the UK government. So just because one particular party might claim that it is a, a de, fa de facto referendum does not change what it is, which is, a, which is an election. Yeah. So we will wait to see whether there are going to be any other initiatives, uh, citizen involvement or some big, broader kind of democratic campaign that the party might try to, to launch over the coming months. Yes, yeah, so we fully expect to hear a lot from the, the pro-independence side. What about the pro-union side? I think up until now, the pro-union side have, have focused a lot on the process, on the legal process, haven't they? Um, rather than perhaps getting into the detail of, of the case for the union. You, you might say the same as well for the, the pro-independence side. So what do you think uh, the, the pro-union side w will do with all of this? Well, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak hasn't really said very much about the union, the constitution. He's obviously very, very preoccupied with other matters, the economy, the state of public services and so on. But um, he will have to respond somehow. Um, 
one option is simply to say, well, that's it. The issue is settled. You're not having a referendum. Um, but there is space for, perhaps for him to be a bit more uh, creative, perhaps to set out some plans for maybe further devolution of power to, to Scotland, perhaps some greater fiscal flexibility, uh, perhaps new institutions to, to improve joint working, partnership working between the UK and Scottish government, that kind of thing. Uh, meanwhile, on the Labour side, we know that um, well, Gordon Brown has been has been leading a uh, commission on behalf of Keir Starmer, which is expected to report in the next few weeks. And, and again, we expect that to set out uh, some reforms, perhaps to the devolution arrangements and the constitution as a whole. So we may start to see, as you say, the union unionist parties uh, start to to make that case for why the union is a good thing because you know whether or not a referendum can can take place i think the the snp is absolutely right that the union does in the end have to rest on on consent and and the idea of 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 a partnership a voluntary partnership if you like of the various nations of the uk okay um good to have you with us today for your thoughts akash pound thank you very much uh, leads the devolution programme for the Institute for Government.